whoever your favorite doctor is, someone who influenced you in a positive way, someone who took care of you when you're sick, someone who maybe saved your life, you know, write them a good review, like right now. Um, it better be and- five stars if they saved your life. I'm just saying, if it's anything less <laughs> than five, five stars, stars, we've got a problem, I think. <laughs> right. Well, if the bill was too high, sometimes, Three out of five, you know. saved my life, could have been better, I guess. This is Med Spa Mayhem, the podcast all about the chaotic world of medical aesthetics. From Botox to lasers to IV bars, learn how to tell real versus fake, legal versus illegal, and safe versus potentially deadly. Hear the crazy stories inside the Med Spa world and find out what questions to ask and how to spot the people cutting corners. I'm your host, Dr. Kate D. Together, we explore the wild west of medicine that is the aesthetics industry. Today, Stephen and I discuss reviews, why they're so important, why so many of them are fake, tips on spotting fake reviews, and why everyone in the med spot industry is playing the review game for good and for evil. Hi, this is Dr. Kate D, and I am back with Stephen Moritz today. Stephen, if you remember from our last episode, uh, used to work in marketing, and for the last couple of years, he's been helping to run New Sculpt, which is a medical spa both in Boca Raton and in Northern Kentucky. Thank you so much for being back, Stephen. Thanks for having me back, Dr. D. <laughs> today, we're going to talk about reviews how to read them, what's great about them, what's awful about them, hopefully ways to spot a fake review. Um, And by the end of the episode, I'm really going to uh, encourage you all to write a really great review for your favorite doctor or nurse or physician assistant, whoever really has given you super awesome care in the past, because it's so very important. So Stephen, where do you and your practice focus on reviews? Where do you get the most reviews online? Okay. Yeah. So we certainly prioritize Google, you know, G- uh, Google My Business reviews. Uh, we, we found the past, you know, several years, and I saw this happening, you know, even prior to, to coming on board, uh, that, you know, Google with the advent of, of Google My Business listings, really pushing that, you know, and most people searching on Google, uh, it's the first thing people see. So we've pretty much honed our entire uh, effort in the way of review uh, collection, aggregation, and, and to push for it uh, right to our Google My Business profile. So each office location we have has its own. Um, and so that's kind of, you know, in a nutshell, like that we just really want everything to kind of just be there. And there's a number of reasons for that. But. that. Do you think that the Google reviews are kind of the best source as a consumer? Uh, is this, uh, okay, I'll speak personally. I personally feel so. Um, I think it's not only good for the consumer because, again, it's it's kind of the first thing people see. It's it's really what um, many businesses are pushing for. And not to go too far into marketing, I promise I wouldn't. But there's a reason for that. Um, believe it or not, Google. If you say leave a review on Google my on uh, Google my business for a company that you love or a business you love, say it's a restaurant, a med spa, whatever it might be, um, the more reviews, quality reviews that a business gets on there, that actually helps them with their SEO. So it's not just, sure, of course. it's helping yes. the, it's helping your favorite <laughs> businesses succeed, um, unlike other <laughs> platforms. So if you leave a review on Yelp or on say, I don't know, so, uh, any other platform, it doesn't really do the same on Google in Google's as eyes. Google. Well, especially yeah. if you're using Google as your search engine, which I think Correct. most people do. Like, like 89% of people or <laughs> 90%. Right. Um, out here in Seattle, some people use Bing, but that's only the people who work for Microsoft. So, um, <laughs> My grandma so, uses Bing. She doesn't have anything. She doesn't know how to install anything else. Um, and and really, the reason reviews are helpful for SEO. So SEO, as we mentioned previously, is search engine optimization. And so businesses are busy trying to make sure that you can find them when you search for them. And Google is really good at that. Google's really good at knowing that okay, you're looking for a med spa in your neighborhood, and it will serve you up the closest med spas. And you're able to read reviews on Google. So if you read all these great reviews um, and, you know, the other one has sort of medium to crappy reviews, then obviously you know where to go. Um, I think that one of the biggest things is if you have just a lot of reviews, it's really helpful to show 
the overall tone um, of like how people feel about it. If there's a place with, you know, only a handful of reviews, you really don't know if that's the majority of like how people feel. Right. Um, is, uh, Yelp very strong in Florida where you live? Um, you know, it does come up in search, you know, like I just did a test not too long ago where I just put in our med spa in, in Boca Raton and put reviews. Obviously, you know, Google's right there, prominent Google, my business shows up. It's like reviews. There's a few other like listing directory sites with maybe one or two reviews. And then further down on the page, I had to scroll a little bit. Yelp finally appeared. You know, I just, you know, my personal thoughts on Yelp. Um, I, I don't, I want to say the answer to your question in short, it's just, I think people go to what they see first. And if they mm -hmm. see the GMB, the Google My Business reviews first, they're going to defer to that. Now, there's outliers if someone swears by Yelp, which I used to back in the day. I don't know, 10 years ago, I swore by Yelp. I was a restaurant reviewer. I was a foodie. I supposed to my food <laughs> pictures onto the Instagram. And I remember I did this review one time on Yelp. I was at this restaurant in Key West. And I was writing the review, took a picture of my food, was writing it. And the the head manager of the restaurant comes by and she's like, why don't you enjoy your food? Why are you texting all over the place? And I was like, I showed him my phone. I was like, all right, do you want this review or not? Because that's what I'm doing. She's like, oh, 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 I digress. That's a complete tangent. I have, uh, you know, that's this thing where I'm all over the place. But long story short, to answer your question, I personally feel that if I were to pull our patients, they would say, I saw you had great reviews on Google. You have one review on Yelp. So if someone did find us on Yelp, Interesting. Chances are they're not getting a good experience from it. <laughs> so I think that um, Yelp uh, has a penetration in different amounts in different parts of the country. It's still somewhat prevalent here in the Northwest. I think Google's taken over. So it used to be maybe 10 years ago, Yelp was very, very strong. It was early into reviews before Google was. And um, over the years, though, it's become less powerful. But I think in certain areas, that Yelp is still used a lot by people. And I went before this uh, recording to see like how many reviews we have on Yelp. And for my business, we have 97 reviews on Yelp that are visible, but yet another 106 reviews that are not visible that, that Yelp lists as not recommended. And for those of you at home, I'm putting little quote signs around not recommended. That's what they call it. And they have a proprietary algorithm where they serve up some and not others. And they won't really reveal what that algorithm is. We don't really know. But if you are a Yelper, like you're on Yelp all the time and you do lots of reviews, then your review will more likely be visible than if you've never written one before and you go into a new place and you really like the food there and you create a profile and you write a, a great review for them. Yelp will make that not recommended. Why? Because you're new and they don't know who you are or whatever. Um, but it really is strange because it favors people who write a lot of reviews, but not everybody writes a lot of, you know, positive reviews. Some people are out there and they've got 20 one-star reviews because they hate everybody and ate everything <laughs> in it. Right. And, and that person will be recommended even though they're severely grumpy for whatever reason. <laughs> And you have somebody else who's only written one or two five-star reviews for a place that they love and it's not recommended. So I, Yelp is, is really problematic for me. Do you because, think that's because of the length of the review? Like if someone's really grumpy and they I write don't. a million words around being grumpy or then on the flip side, <laughs> a positive review where someone's like, oh, no. boy, this is the greatest thing ever. I love this place. And they write like, I, I don't know why Mickey Mouse just came out, but yeah, that was amazing. And then like 3,000 words. Right. I think that is skewed. I know I like. I, that I think Google's that I've not been able that. to figure out any rhyme or reason as to why that that recommends one and not the other. We've had plenty of totally legitimate reviews. People who are you know new to our place. Hey, you know we we ask everybody to write a review. Everybody who walks out the door. And Where do you steer them to though? I mean, if you can't say to someone. Uh, please leave us a review right. on Google, Yelp, Facebook, you know, like right. smoke well, <laughs> signals, like everywhere. To it tell you the truth, tedious. we have um, a QR code up on the wall for both Google and Yelp at, by our front desk. So if we say, oh, gosh, you know, write us a review, we'd really appreciate it. They can go ahead and scan the QR code right there and and write the review. And um, and a lot of our a lot of our patients do. Uh, we have a fair number of reviews and I, I find it really helpful because it's not that every single review should be five stars. As a matter of fact, when you go to look at a place, 
And if they have all five-star reviews and nothing else, you got to wonder how that's possible. <laughs> um, they'll, you'll occasionally get somebody who even loves you and gives you a four-star review or, you know, who has some issue or whatever or the, you know, I had one lady, um, who called up my front desk and was all set to make uh, an appointment. And we take a credit card to reserve an appointment because we want to try to prevent no shows before we had that system people would just no show and, and it would be very costly. So we always take a credit card. We don't charge anything on it. Um, and we really implore people to show up, you know? And so we had one lady who was all ready to make, book an appointment and it came to asking for a credit card and she screamed curses at my front desk person, slammed the phone down and went on Yelp and wrote a one-star review saying, how dare they ask for a credit card? And, um, and I felt like she was doing me a favor. I thought, well, you know what, if someone agrees with her and thinks, well, there's no way I'd make an appointment without a credit card, then that's okay. <laughs> I don't need to call. Um, that that's okay with me. I mean, there are in my neighborhood anyway, uh, to get your nails or your lashes <laughs> done, you need a credit card to reserve yeah, a table my, at a restaurant. I thinking, like, if I don't show up for my hair cutting appointment for my luscious floofy hair, I get charged. <laughs> it's 40, $42, you know? And we so Is that a lot of times, full price for your haircut? Uh, I think it's actually 45 now. I might've gone up, but yeah, no, they, they actually do charge, <laughs> yeah. you know, if you no show and they, so it requires, and if, if hair salons are doing it and, and other right. places, even fancy restaurants, there's been times where I book something for a high end restaurant to take my wife for a wonderful Valentine's dinner. And they said, you know, we are pretty in demand. We got to protect ourselves as a business. If you don't show up, we're losing money. Right. So, so this, I wasn't and, yeah. upset that this person complained, well, they require a credit card for an appointment. You know, at least one that was honest and that was accurate. Um, I do think, though, that Yelp has a rule that if you've never done business with a business, actually, you can't write a review. And this person had not actually ever been to my business. And, and she also was quite rude and, <laughs> and cursed at my front desk person. So I was sort of glad to not um, worry about her coming in. Uh, there was this one, when I first started about 10 years ago, there was uh, not much going on in the med spa where it was still like baby, baby, and there weren't very many. And the one other place that I saw that was closest to where I live and where I, my office is, um, had some really pretty bad reviews and someone had gotten bruised, which is, you know, part and parcel of getting injected as occasionally you're going to bruise somebody. But she um, took pictures of herself all bruised up and she posted them on Yelp and said this person was insensitive and, you know, and that, that I thought, wow, that's horrible. And I was actually scared of being on Yelp at that point because I was brand new and we were, I was just literally starting the business and I thought, oh God, I hope nobody does that to me. But um, about six months later, that same med spa started advertising on Yelp. And when you advertise on Yelp, um, they allow you to control the pictures so you can get rid of someone else's picture and you put up really nice, lovely pictures. And all I know is her overall rating went from pretty crappy to really amazing. She had like all five-star reviews after that. And I know that Yelp has always insisted that they don't help people who advertise, but I'm not totally sure that's possible. Um, do you, um, do I, you find that or do you know? I mean, I don't think we know. So I think uh, the, the I, disclaimer is I don't think we this. know. <laughs> I don't, see, okay. Take, okay. Uh, you know, ca caveat here. I can't prove what I'm about to say. I don't have a source for it yet. But I do recall something, I don't know, five, six, seven, take six years ago, let's say, that Yelp had been rumored to be kind of like a pay to win model where, and I, it might've been an article I came across. And at the time I really, you know, wasn't in charge of things like this, these types of matters of where do we get our reviews and now I am, so <laughs> more cognizant of it. But I rem recall seeing or reading something that's, that said, you know, if you pay, like what you're describing, if you pay, whether it's advertisement or some sort of paid plan into it, I'm not sure what exists now, that you'll be able to have moderation of your stuff. And I, well, I that's, suspect, which that's is what, what they sort of told me many years ago. So I'm going to tell this story now. When I was at my previous hospital uh, 10 years ago, 
I was being harassed by somebody and I just, it was very unpleasant. And when I started the business, one of the first things that happened before I was really barely even open, (laughs) um, this person wrote a one-star review on Yelp and said some just very, very scathing, nasty things about me personally. It was all personal. Um, and they put two pictures on the review, one of which was this old picture of what is commonly known as the lion lady. Have you ever heard of her? She's this sort of this famous picture with this lady who has just way too much filler in her face. She looks really Oh, I know what freakish. you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other picture was a cartoon of a monkey throwing feces. And this and is supposed to be an attack on you. It well, it, it, was, it was it was awful. And then have you and then, been known to look like a lion maybe <laughs> and or throw the feces? No, anyway. And if that's the um, case is no, then that's not legitimate. No, but some of the things that this person wrote in the profile that they made. So they made the profile and then wrote this review that same day. And the things in the profile gave away the identity of this person. I just knew who it was. And I was like, oh my God. And, and I, I flagged it and um, Yelp ultimately after six days, six very painful days, took it down because one of the rules is if you have not been to the business and you don't claim to have ever been to the business, if you just attack somebody, then that's not allowed as a review. So this person didn't claim to ever have come to uh, my office. And so they did take it down, thank goodness. But then, so I had that information and I had the information of the other person who started advertising and all of a sudden the bad reviews went away. So uh, I don't know, a few weeks later, I got a call from Yelp trying to sell me advertising, right? And, and while I had them on the phone, so this is a salesperson, right? And Mm -hmm. just so everybody knows, um, Yelp literally calls all day long. They have a whole sales team calling businesses all over the country, trying to get them to advertise on Yelp. And they make it sound like, well, you know, you can go at it on your own, but you're really going to benefit if you advertise with us. And I asked her point blank, the person calling me to sell me this, I was like, look, I just had this crazy attack um, and, and it's been taken down and that, that was really awful. But like, if I advertise, is there some way to reach you guys? Like if there's something like this, if it ever happens again. And the person on the phone said, you know, basically, well, yes, we can facilitate your connection to that department or something vague like that, which they always deny in public. And this has been on the news, right? That they don't actually do that. Now, I, this never happened again to me. And so it never, I never had an occasion to try to reach them after this, but I did, I did sign up. Wait, this is, I don't know what year this was. It must've been 15 when I started and I signed up for the most basic plan. And the most basic plan basically allows you to put your own photos on there it allows you to um, write in, you know, all your information and everything. And the most important thing is it takes your competitors off of your business page. So that's the one thing they do is if somebody is on Yelp and they search for your business, you know, New Sculpt, if you're not advertising, then they will find everybody that's right nearby you <laughs> along with you as you know, but that's Tory and then it, from it, the it Yelp is. And, right? and it's like, I, I feel it's like bullying. it's racketeering. Right? Yeah. Well, in my, um, in my book, which is coming out in June, I uh, I, that, I, by I, the way, I'm, I've been waiting I, every day. I refuse to read anything until I read that book. Yeah. Well, on, thanks. But I'm on a um, I did, I, I wrote a chapter about Yelp in particular, and the title of the chapter is called the Yelp mafia. So you know how yeah. I feel about Yelp. That sums um, it and, up. But the thing is, that's interesting to me is that Yelp insists that that they have this algorithm, that it's reliable. They won't tell anybody what it is. And they also absolutely insist that advertising doesn't put um, you ahead of anybody else search wise, which I I can guarantee it doesn't. I don't think it does at all. Um, I don't think it gets you much other than getting your competitors off of your page. But I'm afraid to stop paying them because they are the mafia or that's how I feel about it. Um, what about real self? Do you know much about real self and, or can you tell our audience a little bit about re- real self? Yeah. So real self is a platform that from my understanding was originally kind of created specifically for uh, surgeons, mainly plastic surgeons. Um, you know, at, at my last organization, I was part of 
we you know really did push with no no incentive for us and no connection with this business but we did tell a lot of our plastic surgeon uh, practice clients that, that it was one of the best ways to really get visibility and to you know showcase your um, ability and notoriety in your community by going through that. Um, nowadays, again, I think it's kind of fallen off again to the GMB of Google My Business being so prevalent. Uh, but I checked in the other day um, to Real Self, and I did like what I was seeing. It still has a lot of cool, like for a practice, for example, it's got the doctor's information, practice information. Uh, but what's cool, I think, that others don't do, it has a really robust um, like before and after functionality that really allows you to dive deep into the procedure or surgery of interest. So it, I think they're a little bit different angle and they might have actually evolved with the times to be more than just a review aggregate source for a business, a med spa or plastic, but maybe also somewhat of an educational tool um, for visitors to there. So I don't yeah. find any fault in it. I think it's great for plastics. For us as a med spa, I'll keep saying it, Google. There's going to go Google all day. You know, we want to keep it simple for our <laughs> patients. Right. So for our audience, so Real Self is a website that was started actually out here in Seattle to primarily look at the plastic surgery industry and teach people about different kinds of surgery and surgical procedures and plastic surgeons. And so it would have a whole department about procedures and you can learn about procedures regardless of where you were. And then a whole separate part of looking at the doctors who did them and you could find a doctor and have reviews of them. And um, they pride themselves on having questions answered. So anybody could write in any question and they got the doctor's to answer them. And way back then, I don't <laughs> like almost 10 years ago, nine years ago, if you answered enough questions, they would call you a top doc. So I had come from a world of breast cancer where I was top doc in breast cancer world <laughs> over like a long time. It's like seven years. And then I was all of a sudden in a medical spa where there is no top doc for med spas. There's no category for aesthetic medicine. Um, there is for plastic surgery, but, and there's of course for dermatology, but there is absolutely nothing for med spas or Botox or anything. So when the opportunity came along to be a top doc on real self, I was like, oh, okay, let me see what that's about. And I answered a gajillion questions <laughs> on real self a long time ago. It was a lot of work actually. Every morning I'd have my coffee and I'd answer, you know, maybe five questions. It, it took like an hour. I mean, it took a lot of my time. And over time, you know, there just weren't enough doctors to do all that work for them. And they started expanding to include, you know, nurses and PAs and stuff. And they were really desperate for, you know, different clinicians to answer the questions. And that was kind of the mainstay of the website. And over time, those of us who used to do it a lot, uh, just uh, over time, just stopped doing it because it just it wasn't worth the time. It was just a lot of time. And some of the people I know now who are very, very prominent in the field used to be in there answering questions along with me and, and other people. But I think that has really fallen off. So they don't have that many people answering questions anymore. I also don't think that all that many people write reviews on Real Self. So it's not the best source because you just don't have enough of them. And I think you have to read enough reviews in order to get an idea of whether a place is good or not. And if it just has a, a like four or five reviews on Real Self, I just don't think that that's particularly helpful. Yeah, I think from an education standpoint, though, it's a great tool um, to learn, just generally speaking, especially about surgical offerings. If I'm looking for a mommy Absolutely. makeover yeah. or it, you know, a Brazilian bro lift for myself, you know, I think it's uh, <laughs> probably a great resource for a lot of things. And you can explore how other doctors approach these things and to find a doctor near you that can equate. Yeah, yeah I think that it's really though? good. Mm. It's good to, for researching different kinds of procedures yeah. and getting you know, one procedure versus a different one versus a different one. And how do those compare? You can get people's opinions. Um, but as far as reviews for specific doctors or specific clinics or med spas, I don't really think that it's particularly helpful. Um, there are a couple of doctor review sites that are out there and they email me all the time. 
And those are vitals and health grades. Have you ever heard of those or do you deal with those yeah, ever? vitals, health grades, doc, doc. I mean, there's a, the list goes on. I think that kind of goes back into why Real Self has lost some of its luster is because over the, over time, many of these other sources of information and or review aggregation have kind of popped up. Um, you know, I, I just think they're just, there's just so many of them. They flooded the market and I think practices have a difficult time, like what I was describing, you know, may or may not be from like a listing for SEO, but, uh, I don't know. Yeah, for us I personally, don't, we don't, I don't really think use them. that, I don't think that very many people, if you go and look at your favorite doctor, um, if at most they'll have one review or two reviews on either vital, of those, it's vitals, very rare. I haven't really seen that. That was big in 2015. Yeah. Uh, health grade. Similarly, like I honestly, these names, I know them, but it's like a blast from the past. You know, it's like, man, like I haven't heard about you guys in a while. What are you up to? <laughs> um, what about testimonials on web pages? We had a conversation about this before. So uh, you and I have uh, maybe differing opinions on that. What do you think about that? So, you know, interestingly enough, like back in my last place where I was, um, you know, we would recommend putting them on your website, at least a handful, you know, and we had a plugin or a widget or whatever you want to call it that allowed for patients to go there and put them on there. Now, the challenge with that is that if anything that was five stars automatically went live on the site, anything less had to be approved. And I always kind of felt like, you know, as someone that was a consumer of other services, right? Like if I go to a rest or look up a restaurant near me and it's got a million reviews, but if I knew they were heavily moder moderated and omitting things that weren't necessarily pleasant, but they were still truthful, I would kind of have reservation around that, right? I would kind of feel a certain ick, I feel, to that. So <laughs> I would yeah. recommend this. I, for us, we'll do a combination. So like we'll have a selection of real reviews, but then like, you know, click here to read more. And then it'll take you, like we have a plugin that is drawing in dynamically from Google and Facebook and stuff like that. Um, so these are real reviews that are third party, third party platforms that, you know, the, out of our control, you know, the public don't take our word for it as a practice. We say we're right. great. Our patients, here's a selection of what patients we've said of patients have said, but don't listen to us. Go do your own research <laughs> right. Steve, from the horse's mouth. You know, and I think I that truly really builds trust and it's honest, <laughs> right? It's an honest perspective. Yeah. I think it's important to keep in mind that the reviews that are going to be on someone's website are going to be filtered. There's no way they're importing every single review. So even if it's showing you Google or Yelp or Facebook reviews, they're probably only showing you the five star or the four and five stars. So it's really important to go directly to Google or Yelp or Facebook or wherever you're going to get your reviews to look at those. Because I think, you know, as much as it's nice to have testimonials on your page, um, anyone can have testimonials on their page and you don't really know if those are authentic. I think it's from like a, like from like the homepage perspective, just to have like some text, like a you know, snippet from one <laughs> quote, just for like storytelling purposes. But you're right. Like, yeah. I think if you're a patient and you're making a selection of a, of a, of a um, you know, encountering or experiencing a new medical spa or any sort of elective medical uh, practice near you, um, no different from any other business. I could keep bringing up restaurants because I'm a foodie. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> um, I think that it's important to do your due do your homework, right? Like research, look around yeah. and find these credible third parties, whether it's Google My Business, whether it's Yelp, hopefully they're credible. Maybe they're lots up for debate, I guess, right? Read that chapter in the book. I think finding those <laughs> uh, hopefully honest platforms that are not unbiased is really critical. I say that not because as a med spa guy, Steve, the med spa guy, I say that as a consumer of any number of different businesses and, and industries out there. And I want to make an informed decision. So when I take my business somewhere, I'm getting that amazing experience and I'm not getting, you know, sideswiped. So I think as med spot owners or operators like myself and Dr. Dr. D over here, you know, we really want to present that raw, real honesty uh, upfront because, you know, when a new patient comes in, they should know what to expect. They should hear it, not just from Dr. D and her staff or from me and my staff, they should hear it from others that have had amazing experiences. Right. And so totally agree. So what about, I want to talk about fake reviews because there are a lot of fake reviews out there. And we, we know that's true on Amazon and, and sometimes people go on Amazon just to entertain you and write the most hilarious God. reviews. So those are fun too, but Amazon, I can but, talk, that's a whole can of worms right there. <laughs> let's not talk don't, about don't, get me, don't get me started. That's a whole other podcast. For but a different here's industry. the question for as far as let's stick to med spas right now. Um, <laughs> how can you tell a fake review or can you, do you have any, any tip offs that tells you that it's a fake review? So, you know, I, for me personally, like when I'm looking at reviews, the ones I take with most 
um, weight are the ones that are, are a little bit more thorough. I'm not saying I'm reading like 10,000 words and it's someone's memoirs in there, but someone describing a real experience. You know, I think I, you can, most people I would say can judge a sincere uh, form of feedback based on the nature of the storytelling that's involved, right? Yeah. Uh, obviously, you're going to get reviews that say, oh, great experience, five out of five. Like, that's nice. But I think the average person is going to blow right past that because they want right, to get to the meat, it doesn't meat say of much. it. Yeah. it I mean, yeah, it's, it's a great, someone had a great experience, but like, that, I think, how was that? Why was that? So again, fake as opposed to reviews that are not really like quality. Um, you know, I think another thing about fake reviews though, is, you know, things that just don't make any sense. Like if it's just rambling or just not really on, on the topic of at hand, right. Which can bridge on the malicious intent that you encountered before, those are the ones I would say are quote fake, right? Yeah. I, I think ones that are purely rants about something um aren't aren't particularly I don't even know if it, if you can say that they're not real, but that they're I think certainly it's real, not but helpful. Is there is it um, factual? So is it I what's think, the difference between a fake review and an, a non factual <laughs> or a blown out of proportion? Well review? let's let's get to the heart <laughs> of the matter. So I am at least once a week approached on Google, literally through my Google business listing by somebody offering to sell me fake reviews. These are usually people in foreign countries are trying to make money <laughs> and you know, we generate reviews for you and, um, and I just delete them. Okay. But I think plenty of people are paying for reviews and is this these, on Google or is this on Yelp? Uh, or any, it's all over. Platforms? I mean, it's everywhere. It's, it's rampant on Amazon as well, but let's not talk about Amazon, but so, oh God, Don't so, do that. <laughs> But that's Please the don't. thing is, can you spot a fake foreign review? Because, you know, uh, sometimes there's sometimes there's bad grammar or like really poor use of English, but you don't know that that could be somebody here in this country. I, it's got just, a few then. <laughs> I can answer that question then, actually, because we had okay. a competitor that blew up and had like a thousand reviews overnight. And we were like, how is this possible? At first, we were thinking maybe they just did a really good push. Maybe we're not doing a good enough job because they got 300 overnight. How could we do that too? <laughs> Upon review, you've noticed a couple things. One, as you scrolled through these 300 reviews, they were different profiles, but all of a sudden patterns started to emerge. Like you would go, they would leave a review. It said, I had a great experience. Thank you so much, Dr. So-and-so. Okay. Sounds kind of legit, right? Keep going, going, going. 20 more down. Boom. All like identical comment. Identical words. Except it was yeah. a different profile. So and then it took us a step further, right? We're like, what the heck? We clicked open the profile on any number of these. They almost all of them only had one review and it was this review. Yeah. So that is rampant, by the way. So um, if you're looking at a med spa that has 300 five-star reviews and they all kind of, or every 20th one is identical. <laughs> they all came out the then exact you know same period of time. That, like that, it took right, like a they week all to came out it. on the same day. I okay, will say the that. Decided. Like if it's spread out, yeah, if it's over the years, sure. But Right. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, Google will flag a review if you're writing it from another country. And I know this because I write reviews on Google ever since I wrote the chapter about reviews on my, <laughs> in my book, I'm like, oh my God, I, you know, like my kids orthodontist, I gave them a five star review. They're like the most nice, awesome people in the world and they make braces fun. Okay. So they're good. Um, so I started writing more reviews on Google and, um, recently I was a, on a trip to Europe and I, I wrote a review, um, of the restaurant that I went to while I was there and Google uh, took it down. Really? And notified Wait, me. While yes. you were in overseas, you were overseas. You were sitting in the restaurant. Well, no, like I, was. I was. No, no, I wrote it when I got home. Oh. And, um, yeah, it was like okay. one of my last nights there. And anyway, and, and so, but Google does have a way to protest that. And then you know, if you respond and saying, "Oh no, that was real," then they might reinstate it. But a word of um, warning to practices who do this: if you're listening out here. I hope, you're, I hope you don't do this, but if you if you are doing it, you should stop. And the reason is not that it's it, obviously it's not good practice. It's shady, as, as you know what. Google will actually <laughs> ding you an SEO. So we'll talk about the SEO building. Google will actually uh, knock you down in search rankings if you do this. If you do that, well, that's good I, to know <laughs> because I actually have an insider. We have I have a friend that works. At, he was working for Google, like in their search team, and I asked him that. I said, "How is this? Like they're they're cheating?" And he goes, "Don't worry, like we're catching up to him." Like 
there are actors hidden protocols and and code and, and algorithm in place that penalizes businesses who perform this act. Well, that's that's great. It's nice to know that um, some of the cheaters will eventually have a comeuppance. Um, I, I want to mention a few more people who write fake reviews because it's not just people paying for them. So that is rampant and just, you know, be warned, try to, you know, look at reviews with some discernment, but, um, also sometimes your competitors. So if somebody really hates you or wants to take you down, they might write, uh, a bad, you know, set of reviews, a whole bunch of one-star reviews, um, from various computers that they can find. Right. So competitors will sometimes write you bad reviews. Um, if you have a disgruntled ex employee that can happen, um, luckily that this has not happened to me. Um, but that is also big when I talk to, when I have a very favorite podcast that's put on by lawyers. And that is a big thing that the lawyers talk about is the competitors writing bad reviews. And the other crazy thing that can happen is like, the ex-boyfriend or girlfriend of one of the people at this med spa might go on and write terrible reviews about them because they're mad. You know, that's he not- dumped me and therefore your <laughs> Botox is not good. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, We've been pretty much- I haven't just... dealt with that personal attack stuff, but I've seen it. I, I you know, again, working with many practices, including your own in the past, I have seen that come to think of it. Like these personal, yeah. and I remember these, these calls, these poor practices- I remember this one doctor stood out. She was probably like in her late sixties, early seventies, and she's so sweet. And she goes, "Oh, Stephen, I don't know what to do. These people—they keep attacking. Like, how can we ch- fix this?" And I, and I told her, "I don't really have a good response." But and looking back, I didn't have the knowledge I do now. You can petition these things. You can fight these things. But it was really brutal for a poor business owner who did nothing wrong other than a competitor, like you said, was just attacking her ruthlessly. Yeah, it's very painful to think about. So I want to leave an, an, a notion with, with our audience. And, and that is, I'm going to just start by saying, uh, go out, maybe pause this right now and write a review for your favorite doctor. It's really important, especially if they're not at a med spa. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> most, most people back in, you know, big medicine, um, we, we don't get reviews that the doctors don't get reviews at all. They've been working in an ear for like 15 years and, and all it takes is, is one person who's really upset about life, you know, to give you a bad review. And that's basically all you have to go for your whole 15 year career in the ER is that one person who complained. And, you know, so traditionally doctors just don't, we, you know, don't ask for reviews, don't get them. So I really highly encourage you, like, you know, whoever your favorite doctor is, someone who influenced you in a positive way, someone who took care of you when you're sick, someone who maybe saved your life, you know, write them a good review, like right now. Um, it better be and- five stars if they saved your life. I'm just saying, <laughs> if it's anything less It'd than five, five stars, stars, we've got a problem, I think. <laughs> right. Well, if the bill was too high, sometimes, Three out of five, you know. save my life, could have been better, I guess. Um, but it, it really makes a huge difference in, in our lives. It really does. And, and that's why, you know, for, for us and our, in the med spa, of course, we know people are reading all about us before they come in. And we, we realize that's super important. It's super important for you to learn about us. Um, it's super important for you to like get an idea if it, if it sounds like a good fit between you and the, the place you're going. So we, we acknowledge it's really important and most places really care about, about their patients, about customer service, about making it a good experience. And they're going to want, you know, they, it, it really, really helps. It helps us in a huge way. So I'm going to leave you all with that. Thank you so much, Stephen, for coming back and talking about this topic with me. I really appreciate it. Not a problem. Anytime. Awesome. So we'll see you next time. If you have a question or a crazy story of your own that you'd like to hear on MedSpa Mayhem, contact us through our website, medspamayhem.com, or check out our contact information in the liner notes. If you learned something today and like what we're doing, please give us a five-star rating and read the book. MedSpa Mayhem is coming out June 11th, 2024. The link to pre-order is available on medspamayhem.com. We hope you've learned at least one new thing today about the review game. You don't need to become a local guide on Google, but we do hope you'll write at least one review today of your favorite medical provider. Thanks for listening.
This has been Med Spa Mayhem with Dr. Kate D. We are so grateful you're listening and we hope you've learned at least one fun or possibly disturbing fact today. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a five-star review. Oh, and read the book. Med Spa Mayhem comes out June 2024. Available everywhere books are sold. You can pre-order now on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and at bookshop.org. Links and more can be found on medspamayhem.com.